Hello and welcome to worship with Resurrection Lutheran Church in Shanahan, Illinois. I am Pastor Ben Ingelson. I'm glad we're together for worship today. Um, at this time, our congregation is worshiping both in person and through our videos. Uh, on the Sundays in which we have an outdoor worship service at the church, we make our videos this way. In the future, you are invited to worship with us at Resurrection Lutheran Church in our building and also through our live stream videos. In the meantime, though, I hope this video is a blessing to you today. I'm glad we're together for worship. Thank you for worshiping together with Resurrection Lutheran Church. And we begin our worship today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Oh. Welcome to church. Good morning. Welcome to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, the gift of your Son and your Holy Spirit. We thank you also for the gift of worship, a time to gather in your presence with our friends in Christ, to give thanks for the gift of your grace and your love that you so gladly and generously give to us. We pray this time of worship would center us in you, would help us to hear your call in our life, as well as to help us give thanks and celebrate for the richness that is your one holy church. And we give thanks that we get to be part of it through your Holy Spirit who holds us together. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading for our worship today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Paul's writing, 
to a beginning church in the town of Ephesus. And so Paul writes this, In light of all of this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, a prisoner for the Lord, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. Not in fits and starts, but steadily, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert and noticing differences, and quick to mend fences. You were called to travel on the same road and in the same direction, so stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. You have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who rules over all, who works through all and is present in all. Everything you are and think is permeated with oneness. But this does not mean you should all look and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given our own gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for our conversation today, we're going to make a distinction, a distinction between oneness and sameness. And as the church, we give thanks that God makes us one, while also not necessarily having us all be the same. So we're going to make a distinction here between oneness and sameness. And this comes up in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So Paul is writing to a new congregation a group of Christians that are coming together. They're learning about what it means to be Christ's church in the world. An important note of context here is that in these letters in the New Testament, Romans, Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians, right, all these letters, these are letters that are being written to new congregations. And as the church is developing and growing a couple decades after Jesus' death and his resurrection, it, it's important to note that within the church there's a lot of variety and difference. The people who are coming and coming to believe in Jesus and to be part of the church, well, they come from different religious backgrounds. There's different cultural backgrounds represented in the new church. You've got different socioeconomic levels within the church, right? So there's all this kind of difference within the church. And at the same time, we hear in this particular reading where Paul writes, we are one. We are one as the church because we have one Lord one faith, one baptism, one God who is the Father of all, who is over all, who is with all, who is present in all. So even in light of all that is kind of different within the church, Paul says, hey, we're all one. And we're one because we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. And then right on the heels of this point about being one, Paul makes this important clarification. He says, Although we're one, that does not mean you all should look the same, act the same, and sound the same. In other words, oneness is not the same as sameness. Oneness is not sameness. Just a way of getting into this, I mean, think about all the ways you've experienced the church in your life. Perhaps maybe the congregation you grew up in. Uh, maybe you had an opportunity to worship with a friend, right? Someone who was part of a different church and you experienced worship in a different way. Or maybe at a wedding or a funeral you experienced a different expression of the church. On a vacation you went and visited a, a cathedral that didn't look like the building that you worshipped in. i give you just a second, like, just kind of recall all the different expressions of the church you've seen and experienced in your lifetime. You know, I think about it for myself too. <laughs> I grew up in a church in Moline, Illinois, a Trinity Lutheran church that was shaped by Swedish immigrants. The faith that I grew up in was shaped by the Swedish immigrant experience in the Quad Cities, their piety, the music they liked, and what they thought a holy space looked like. Since moving from there, I've had the opportunity to worship in Catholic churches, Greek Orthodox churches, mega churches, non-denominational churches. I've had the chance to opportunity to worship in like hip, trendy churches in Minneapolis that are trying new cutting age things in Chicago. I've had the opportunity to worship in other countries as well, Cameroon, West Africa. And even there, there's a variety of 
congregations that I had an opportunity to be with, the English-speaking Lutherans, there was the French-speaking Lutherans, there were the bias-speaking Lutherans, and, and some were in church buildings, and some we sat on pews, and you were so cramped you couldn't even move, and you sat that way for like three hours on a hot day, and we loved it, and we praised God together. I've had the opportunity to worship in house churches, just gathering in a living room in Senegal, West Africa, where there's been an opportunity to like just kind of be in what the Senegalese called the bush, just like out, way out, and we just sat on the ground and sat under a grass thatched roof for worship. I've had the opportunity to worship in black congregations on the south side of Chicago or high liturgical Lutheran churches on the north side of Chicago. I've been in worship services where we used the pipe organ, where we only used drums, where there was a band leading worship, or where there was silence, or there was chanting, even polka in Wisconsin. <laughs> On a vacation Sunday, came across a polka service. I've been in worship that was outside at night around a campfire, or student-led worship in college, or the Reformed Church where I worshipped in France. And interesting to note there, when they have their church potlucks, they serve they serve champagne. So, collectively, right, my experience with different aspects of the church, your experience, we can see that there are a lot of differences within the church and yet Paul says we are one. We are one because we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father, who is over all, who is with all, who is present in all. And we think about our experience of the church, what it all comes down to is that essence of we gather, we gather to give thanks to God for the gift of Jesus Christ, God's love for us. And in countless ways, the church participates in God's mission that happens in the world. And I, I should mention, right, because we're on a video, right, we're also worshiping, we're experiencing the church through video, through live stream as well. Now, in some ways, it seems like it's human nature to gather around <laughs> sameness. Churches, denominations are no exceptions, right? We do tend to gather around what we have in common. And so churches, congregations, we gather around, you know, musical preferences, worship style preferences, biblical interpretation uh, preferences. We gather around uh, political leanings, race, theology, right? There's all these different things that within the church we do. We kind of gather around and it can sometimes look more like sameness. But Paul writes, we're one. The whole church is one even with all of that, that makes us unique and different as well. And all those congregations that I was just sharing with you, the ones that you thought of too, at our essence, we give thanks to God. And we join in following Jesus into the world to be God's love for all people. So on this kind of like grand scheme, we believe in the universal church. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, we say in the Apostles' Creed. Catholic meaning universal. And we believe that we are one because God makes us one. The Holy Spirit holds us together as one church. And this is true on a micro level too. Resurrection Lutheran Church. We are one because we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, the Father of all. And Paul is quick to remind us as well, while we give thanks for being one, Paul says, but that does not mean that you should all look the same, sound the same, and act the same, right? Oneness is not the same as sameness. Matt Nagy, who is the coach of the Chicago Bears, um, he has a big card that he holds over his face <laughs> during a game uh, when he's calling plays. But on that card that he has, he's got on there pretty big, be you. And it sounds like that's his mantra. It's his reminder to himself, be you. Coach how you coach, right? It's a reminder to himself that he's not Don Shula, Vince Lombardi, or Coach Ditka, right? He's Coach Nagy, be you. And in a way, that's kind of what Paul is writing to the first church there in Ephesus as well. And what Paul is saying to us, be you. Paul says, you, you were called by God to walk on this road with the one 
church, to be a source of God's grace and goodness in this world. You were called. Be you. And so when I hear Paul say, be you, I just can't help but think of the people who make up Resurrection Lutheran Church and all the different skills, gifts, talents, personalities, characteristics, passions that are represented in this one congregation. And Paul says, be you. Right? I think of Nancy, who loves sharing God's grace with preschoolers and little kids. Or I think about Jeannie and her sending out cards. I think of Ruth singing, you say, or speaking of singing. Uh, Bill, who loves to sing about love of God, love of country around national holidays. I think of Charmaine welcoming guests and visitors to our congregation, making sure they feel welcome. Or Ben setting up our live stream so we can do that and worship as well. I think of Lisa and her heart for our homeless neighbors and the way she's gotten us making kits and sharing uh, kits with the people we encounter. I think of Nikki and her heart for uh, people who have experienced miscarriages and stillbirths and her willingness to, to, to lead a group uh, that could be a source of comfort for folks who have experienced that profound loss. Or Heather and Ingrid who helped us to become more aware of what sensory uh, processing challenges are and how as a congregation we can be welcoming to our friends and neighbors um, who have autism or sensory processing challenges. Or I think of the kids in our congregation and the way they were going about uh, with sidewalk chalk to write encouraging messages to their friends and other kids in the church or the kids you know, who put all around our church building messages like God loves you. Or the Tomlinsons and their heart for foster children and the ways they got us supporting uh, when by getting these duffel bags in, in kids' hands who, so when they're going into a new foster home, they have what they need, the clothes and the gear that they need. Joan helping us to be anti-racist. Janet bringing baked goods on a Sunday. Alex and the Forsters getting us to host a 5K. Kent taking pictures for the baptism family uh, just the other Sunday. Right? And, and this is not an exhaustive list. And so if I didn't say your name, no offense, because this video, we would run out of memory on this card. YouTube would say, it's gotten too long. You just can't put this much video up. I'm sorry, right? And maybe you're just feeling like, okay, we get it. We get the idea. Be you. Because each of us, you, you are your own unique combination of who God made you and created you to be. You have your skills, your gifts, your talents, your passions, and what you've gone through in this life and because of who you are, and because of who God made you to be, God calls you. God calls you to share the love that you have been given through Jesus Christ. And the way Paul says it is, God calls you to walk with the church. We're all walking in the same direction, following in God's call, following in Jesus' leadership, and we're doing it in our own unique way. And it's beautiful, right, when all are walking together, one as one, but we don't look the same, we don't sound the same, we don't act the same. Just think how much more powerful God's love is that flows through the church when it happens in so many ways through so many different folks. People like me, people like you. You see, there is conformity. There's conformity that happens through the church. But the conformity that happens is we're conforming to God's will. We're conforming to Jesus' leadership and we're conforming to God's call in our life. And I think we could also say that we are conforming to a truer version of ourself. The truest version of ourself that God made us to be. That's the conformity that happens. It's not conformity to sameness, right? We give thanks that we're one. And we lift up oneness as something to celebrate, that we are one because we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. So we celebrate oneness. And when we celebrate oneness, it opens us up. It helps us to appreciate one who God made each of us to be. But it also helps to appreciate, hey, that's what makes you, you. And I'm glad you are you. And I'm glad of the ways that you share God's love, right? That's what happens when we celebrate oneness. Now, well, when we value sameness, I don't know, it seems like when we value sameness, it kind of becomes a lower common denominator of what we can agree on that we like. 
valuing sameness can also maybe kind of limit some of our welcome and maybe even cause us to unintentionally exclude. So we want to celebrate the oneness of the church more so than value the sameness of a congregation or the sameness of the church. So, as Paul says, we are one. We are one because we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. But that does not mean we must all look the same, sound the same, or act the same. So thank you for being you. Thank you for all the ways that you follow God's call in your life. And thank you for letting God shape you into being the truest sense of who God made you to be. We give thanks that we're one and that we're not the same. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all God's people everywhere. We give you thanks, God, that through your Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you hold us together as your one true church, your church that is universal, that spans time and space. And we give you thanks that we get to be part of it through your grace and your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you would help each of us to hear your call in our life, and we thank you that you look at us and you declare us good because we are your creation. All that makes us unique, you celebrate. So we pray that you would help us to celebrate that as well in ourselves, as well as to affirm that in our friends, in our family, our neighbors, and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue praying for your whole world, God, as we continue living through a pandemic we pray that you continue to help us to be a source of support to one another, especially as numbers can have started to rise again. Uh, give us the fortitude, the wherewithal to, uh, to keep working together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we continue praying for civil servants in our community, first responders, doctors, nurses, those who put themselves at risk to serve us. We thank you for the ways that they follow your call in their life and are a source of your presence when we need help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift before you, God, the names of all the ones we know need your healing this day. And we say their names now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks to God for all those loved ones in our lives who have been a source of your goodness. And we thank you that because we are one together in the church, we are also one with those who have already died in the faith that you have raised to new life. We give you thanks that the oneness of the church spans beyond the grave. And we get to be held together through your eternal love with those who have gone before us. And we say the names of our loved ones now. All of our prayers, God, we entrust into your hands through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace this day with all who you encounter. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping with Resurrection Lutheran Church today. I'm glad we've had this time together. I'm also thankful the Holy Spirit holds us together as one, even when we're not physically in the exact same place. And thank you for being you. We invite you to participate in the life of Resurrection Lutheran Church. If you're not yet connected with us and you'd like to know more about our congregation, please reach out. We'll be glad to follow up with you. Thank you. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, be you, and serve the Lord. <laughs>